Let's take a look at the connectors on dash module number two and the connections that we need to make to the module from the car. On the module, we have a 25-way D-type connector. The pins of this count from right to left on the socket. So that's pin one at upper right on the socket. And of course, on the connecting plug, the connections count the opposite way from left to right. So pin one on the plug is upper left. Pin one on the socket is upper right. The D-type connector was the connector used on the original versions of dash module number two. So we've retained that connector on these boards for compatibility with any cars that are wired with a harness with these types of plugs in it. However, the latest versions of these modules, the Series 7 versions, include some additional functions and they're incorporated on the terminal block connectors. But the terminal block connectors also um, include the features, the functions that were connected on the D-type. So some of the functions, early functions, can be, can be taken through the D-type plug or the terminal block connectors. And the most recent functions are only available on the terminal block connectors. So let's just plug this up, uh, in to the test rig that we have set up here. And let's take a look at the connections that we need to make. Let's start by talking about the power supply, which is the ignition switch power supply from the car. That goes in on pin 1 of the D-type connector, or alternatively, on pin 1 of the terminal block connectors. The terminal block connections count from right to left. So we have pin 1 at the right, looking from the back of the unit, and pin number 37 at the left, looking from the back of the unit. The ground return for the power supply is on D-type connector pin number 25, or alternatively on terminal block connector pin number 2. Continuing looking at the essential connections to the unit, this is a speedo, so we need a speed signal, and that goes in on pin 23 of the D connector, or pin 33 of the terminal block connectors. Now, we'll have a look in a moment at where we take these signals from, but do bear in mind with this vehicle speed sensor signal that you can either use an aftermarket speed sender signal, or you can use the one built into the car. But there are differences between the years of cars. For example, um, on the 82, 83 cars, um, possibly a little later than that as well, the speed sensor is taken from a buffer module on the back of the dash. So the original dash cluster has to be kept in place if you're going to use that. And it's an output from the dash um, to the ECM. Whereas on later cars, that signal, that VSS signal, is actually generated from a small module behind the uh, passenger compartment, and it's fed as an input to the dash. Uh, but we'll look at um, the details of that a little bit later. In fact, you know what? Let's look at it now. Um, the best place to pick up many of these connections to the dash modules is the stock connectors behind the standard um, instrument cluster. Now, if we remove the instrument cluster, the stock instrument cluster, we're going to see two 14-way connectors, a black one at the top and a white one at the bottom. This is a photograph that I took from an 82 or an 83 car. And in fact, I think the connectors, um, this pinout applies to cars between 82 and 85. Here's another photo of a the same connectors, but on a car a bit later, I think about 86 and 86 Firebird this was, and you can see that there are different pins fitted, and it turns out that the connections to them are significantly different. There could be other configurations as well, but as far as I'm aware, there are only two main configurations that I'm aware of. The configuration that we see on the left for 82 to 85 cars, and the configuration that we see on the right for 86 through 92 cars. The connector's pins are numbered as shown. The upper connector starts with pin 1 at the upper right, and the pins are numbered counterclockwise around the connector. The lower connector is connected 
that the lower connector is uh, numbered with pin number one at lower left and again numbering counterclockwise around the connector. We've just put some labels on here to show the functions of the known pins on these connectors. Um, those little arrows represent whether the signals are inputs or outputs and apart from the pin 6 on the early cars everything is an input. That pin 6 as we mentioned earlier on the earlier cars is actually an output of the VSS signal from the dash generated by a module on the dash out to the ECM for it to control the torque converter lockup. You'll notice that there are a few connectors that I'm not sure of the function of. That is pin 5 on the lower connector of the early cars and pins 4, 5 and 6 on the upper connector of the later cars. So if any of you have clues as to what those do, please let us know. Finally, just to point out that the lower connector is designated C1 and the upper connector is, gen is uh, designated C2. And so the, um, the signals that we're interested in for the vehicle speed sensor are highlighted yellow here. Um, so that's pin 6 on the upper connector C2 on the early cars and pin 14 of the lower connector C1 on the later cars. What other signals do we need for essential connections? Well, um, uh, fuel, we, we, generate, we um, use this module to represent the uh, fuel quantity on the lower bar gauge. And that is actually a resistive signal which we can pick up from pin 2 on the upper connector C2 of the early cars or pin 10 of the upper connector C2 on the later cars. So that fuel signal, that fuel quantity signal, um, which is a variable resistance to ground between about 100 ohms for a full tank and 0 ohms representing empty, that signal goes in on D-type connector pin 3 or on pin 36 of the terminal block connectors. The engine temperature signal, which is a variable resistance to ground again uh, of a few kilo ohms. We can pick up the feed for that engine temperature signal on pin 1 of the upper connector C2 on the early cars or on pin 5 of the lower connector C1 on the later cars. Um, that goes in on pin 4 of the D-type connector or pin 35 of the terminal block connectors. Now these signals of uh, fuel quantity and temperature, the characteristics of the sender can vary from car to car. So we might need to um, adjust your particular calibration uh, specific for your module when you get it installed. High beam signal, the, uh, we use this um, the center one of this group of three here, this group of three LEDs, we use the center one to represent the uh, a telltale for the high beam lights. We can pick up the feed for that signal, the high beam telltale, and the early cars on pin 1 of the lower connector C1, or on the later cars, pin 8 of the upper connector C2. And that signal is a just a switched power supply, um, which goes in on D-type connector pin 18, or terminal block connector pin 7. The left turn repeater, which we use to drive this left hand signal of this group of three. We can pick up the feed for the left turn telltale on the early cars pin 9 of the upper connector C2 and on the later cars pin 7 of the upper connector C2 goes in on D-type connector pin 17 or on terminal block connector pin 5. The right turn signal, which we use to drive the right hand one of this group of three. And we can pick up the feed for the right 
turn telltale. Um, on the early cars, it's pin 10 of the upper connector, C2. And on the later cars, it's pin 9 of the upper connector, C2. Goes in on D-type connector, pin 19. Or terminal block connector, pin 9. Finally, of the essential signals, we have a speaker on board, which is used to generate audio tones, warning tones, um, and that you can either use the onboard speaker, in which case put a small link between pins 26 and 27 of the terminal blocks. There's no connections to the D speaker on the D type connector because this was introduced only on the most recent versions of the module. So if you want to use the onboard speaker, a small link between pins 26 and 27. Otherwise, if you want to use an external speaker, make sure it's an 8 ohm impedance speaker. Remove that link and connect the high side of the speaker to pin 26 and the low side to pin 28. Um, also, in UK legal requirements, we have a requirement for a indication on the dash of the state of the rear fog lights. Well, it doesn't have to be on the dash, but we we accommodate that by pin 10 on the D-type connector or terminal block connector pin 13. Let's just power the module up for a moment and um, just demonstrate some of those signals that we've we've mentioned a moment ago. So we put power onto the unit um, and simulate um, the turn signals. Let's just turn this around a bit so we can see. Uh, so left turn, you can see, indicates on this here. Right turn on that one there. And high beam signals, high beam telltale, is represented by this centre here. Um, engine temperature is this upper gauge. And we have over temperature warnings. Now that might need to be calibrated to your particular car because all of these sensors do vary a little bit so we can calibrate that specifically to individual cars once the module's incorporated. Fuel gauge is a resistance on indicated on this lower gauge and we've put a um a delay on the response of this because obviously the fuel t the fuel quantity isn't going up and down very rapidly and if we don't put that delay on then this gauge would tend to sweep up and down as you go around turns, which we don't want. So we've put, when you just adjust the fuel quantity on the rig or when you fill your tank up, it's going to take a little while for that to respond because we don't want that varying up and down rapidly. These other red green indicators here correspond to 12 volt switched inputs and green represents that the signal corresponding input is is high is switch high whereas red indicates it's open circuit we have these hooked up to um, these are optional signals we'll look at those later but of the essential signals we have the um, fog light signal connected to this one here so fog lights on fog lights off so of the essential signals we've spoken about, we only have um, high beam, left turn, right turn, fog lights, speed, obviously, temperature, and fuel, and obviously uh, an odometer reading on the top here. This four digit display can be configured to a number of different functions. Right now it's indicating fuel, but pushing push button one, we'll talk about these push buttons in a little, in a little while. Um, we can switch between different functions. For example, there we have engine temperature in Fahrenheit, um, supply voltage. These are for optional inputs, which we can send via the serial bus. We'll talk about those later as well three of those available, um, a show mode, a direct display mode, and a trip meter. 
Now, if we push push button two briefly, we can change between miles and kilometers. Unfortunately, the seven segment displays don't allow us to display an M or a K for miles and kilometers. So for miles, we use a small U indicating US or UK units and a C representing Canadian units, kilometers. So we have this one set to 9292 miles, which corresponds to 14867 kilometers. And you can toggle those if you actually see, if you actually leave the unit in kilometers, for example, and power it down and power up again, it will retain that setting. So you don't have to switch it every time. Go driving in Canada, you can just switch the unit over to kilometers and it'll stay that way until you switch it back. So let's talk about some more connections on this module. Um, let's talk about uh, some connections which are not essential, but recommended to get the full functionality out of the unit. We were just talking about some push buttons and these are just ground switched push buttons at the ground switch latching switch. And those go in on the following pins. Um, SW1, which is our switch number one, which is a latching switch to ground. Um, the low side of it, we want to connect to pin 37 on the terminal blocks. And the other side of it, the side which switches down to ground, we can connect either on pin 16 of the D-type connector or pin 17 of the terminal blocks. That's the white wire on here. Push button number one, which is a momentary push button to ground. Again, the um, the low side of it, the common ground side of it, is connected to pin 37. And the other side, which switches to ground, is connected on D-type connector pin, pin 15 or terminal block connector pin 18. Push button number two, again, common side is pin 37 on the terminal blocks and the switched side is pin 2 on the D-type connector or pin 19 on the terminal blocks. We also have <clears throat> potentiometers which are used for brightness control and we have the brightness control can control the brightness of the numeric displays and the bar gauges and the brightness of the LED light bars. That's all these little indicators here. Uh, we have them configured by default to have a separate resistor, a separate potentiometer to control the brightness of those two parts of the display. Um, we're going to actually incorporate into the software the option to control the, the brightness of the whole display by one potentiometer. But right now, with the potentiometer number one, which controls the brightness of the numerics and the single element, single LED bar gauges, um, that's connected on D-type connector pin 14 with the ground side of the pot just connected to ground or you can connect it through the terminal blocks on pin 22 for the high side of pot number one and pin 23 for the low side of pot number one which is just a, a convenient place to pick up a ground. Potentiometer number two which controls the brightness of the light bars you can connect that on pin 21 of the D-type connector or on pin 24 of the terminal block connector with a convenient ground point pickup on pin 25. Finally we have some optional connections um, which you may want to connect up or not depending on how much functionality you want on the display. And those are the other red-green indicators. We tend to use those to indicate the status of um, various pickups which are responsible for the fuel supply to the car. So for example, the first pair of red-green indicators we use to indicate ECM power. So if power is switched onto the ECM and it's, the fuse is good, then this indicator will indicate green. The second one, we, we connect to the relay drive from the ECM um, which switches the fuel pump relay on. The third one we connect to the output of the fuel pump relay which then feeds the fuel pump fuse and then the fourth one we, we connect to the output of the fuel pump fuse. So if anything fails in the 
chain between the ECM power being switched on, the ECM actually switching on the fuel pump relay, the fuel pump relay producing an output, and the fuel pump fuse being good, if anything fails in that chain, we can diagnose that by which of these indicators is not green. Now we can pick up the connections we need to drive these additional um, red-green indicators from the fuse box, or at least we can pick up three of those connections from the fuse box. Um, if we look at this diagram here, this photograph here, we see that the upper left fuse is the ECM power fuse, and the left-hand side of that is the output of the fuse. So if we splice into the wire behind the left-hand side of that, um, that upper left fuse, which is a 10 amp fuse, we can pick up the feed that we need for um, the red-green indicator pair number one on DM2, which we use to represent ECM power. For the um, second red-green indicator pair, there's no connection that we can actually pick up from the fuse box. So you can see from the little note I've put at the bottom right there that uh, we need a separate feed from the, the actual relay drive to operate that, um, that indicator. Um, the next indicator, the uh, in indicator pair number three, which is the output of the fuel pump relay, that goes to the input side of the fuel pump fuse, which is actually removed on this photograph. So if we splice into the connection behind the right-hand side of that fuel pump fuse, we can pick up the drive that we need for the red-green indicator pair number three, which indicates fuel pump relay output. And finally, if we pick up, if we splice into the wire behind the left-hand side of that fuel pump fuse, which is the output of the fuse, we can pick up the feed that we need to drive the indicator pair number four, which we use to represent the fuel pump fuse status. The fifth red-green indicator, we generally tend to connect to the reverse lights to tell if the reverse lights are on. We've mentioned the sixth one as the rear fog lights. And the seventh one, you can use for pretty much anything you like, but I tend to use it on my car to indicate the status of the uh, rear defroster. If you don't have a defroster on the rear windshield, on the rear screen, you can um, use that for something else. So what pins do those go on? ECM power pickup, and these are all just high switch discrete inputs, so high switch power signals. Um, ECM power for red green indicator number one goes on D type connector pin five or terminal block pin six. The fuel pump relay drive on D type connector pin six or terminal block pin eight. The output output from the fuel pump relay on D type connector pin seven or terminal block pin 10. Fuel pump fuse output, so that's the downstream side of the fuel pump fuse, on D-type connector pin 8, or terminal block connector pin 11. The reverse light connection, D-type connector pin 9, or terminal block connector pin 12. The rear defroster, or any other signal you want to put on the 7th red-green indicator, D-type connector pin 11, or terminal block connector pin 14. Another signal that we have on here is um, an optional ground switched input, which enables the sensitivity of the bar gauge to be doubled just to make a, a more colorful display. Let's just demonstrate that. So if we put a speed signal on, you can see that normally we have one LED for each additional 10 miles per hour. If we double the bar sensitivity, we double the number of LEDs for a corresponding speed. It just puts more. Just puts more LEDs on the display. So that's an optional ground switched input. And if you want to use that, you need to connect that ground switched uh, switch on D type connector pin 24 or on the terminal block pin 16. We also have on here 
something which will be more useful at a later stage, which is the possi the um, facility to connect a RS-232 serial data bus to the unit. And the receive side, we connect on pins 29 and 30 of the terminal blocks. And the transmit side, that's the transmission from the module out on terminal block connectors pin 32, excuse me, pin 31, high side and 32, low side. We have the facility to reset the module by a ground switch signal on terminal block pin 20 with a convenient ground located on the adjacent pin 21. And finally, we have two spare high switch inputs on terminal block connectors pin 4 and 15. Those um, connections aren't functionally doing anything in the software um, by default, but if any particular uh, customer would like a particular function connected to there, then those are the connections we will connect those onto and we'd have to, of course, produce a custom version of software to display the required functional response to those inputs. So that pretty much covers the module's connections. Finally, this connection here, though, this uh, six-way connector, is the ICSP connector, in-circuit serial programming. We'll talk about that in a separate video. This enables you to update the software or to install custom versions of the software. Let's just have a look at the function, uh, the um, module working again in normal operation. We'll talk about the different the different modes in different videos. But when we first power up, you'll notice that the the four digit display actually shows momentarily the the version of the software being run on the unit in the case of this unit it's version 1.05 and you'll see that 1.05 momentarily displayed on this four digit display if we put a speed signal on you can hear that we're generating a um, a clicking sound by the onboard speaker to simulate the um, the clicking sound that we heard on the TV car and that uh, can be switched on or off. By the way when you actually slow the car down and stop only when the speed reaches zero you hear it confirmed by a beep at that point it's actually re it's actually saving the um, the stored odometer and trip meter values to memory. So that's how it decides when to write the information back of the odometer and the trip meter into the onboard EEPROM. When the speed goes from a non-zero value to a zero value, it'll store and it'll confirm that storage by the beep, which can also be switched on or off. So if we power down and power back up again now, you can see it's stored that 0 0.4 miles. Um, we mentioned that these potentiometers control brightness. Here's potentiometer number one. If we take that right down, you can see that that varies the brightness of the numerics and the bar gauges. They can even go right off. If you don't connect these parts, it'll just go on to uh, full brightness. And then the other potentiometer, the other part, contain, controls the brightness of the, um, the LED light bars. Again, if you don't connect those up at all, it's just going to display full brightness.